All right. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Rocking With You here on a Friday. I hope everybody's enjoying the day before the weekend. Uh, first of all, thank you to the new subscribers. Thank you to my man, CT, for mentoring me through this process, um, telling your subs to come follow my page. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, I give you guys some good content. I know we do different things. I am going to start getting into some other things on the page, So, um, but thank you. I appreciate the love. Uh, so let me go ahead and get to it. Um, so today was the last day for teams to sign franchise players and a couple of NFL teams did not, uh, it doesn't look like anyone signed their franchise players. So, uh, some of the big names is the chiefs. Let me go ahead and, uh, bring up the screen. Some of the bigger names were Orlando Brown on the Chiefs. Uh, he didn't sign his uh, extension. It says here that the Chiefs offered him a six-year deal. You would think the Chiefs would have money because they didn't pay Tyreek Hill. I mean, they traded him for uh, traded for him with the first-round pick. So you think they would pay him and take care of him? The Chiefs' final offer was a six-year, one hundred thirty million, one hundred thirty-nine million deal. Well, Thirty million in sign bonus and 95 in the first five years. Why didn't you take that? Wow. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know why you wouldn't take that. Um, it's always interesting to me if they skip a uh, training camp or not skipping training camp to me just makes you more likely to get injured. You know, these, there's always players that come back and, they get injured quickly because you can't simulate football uh, practice um, at home. No matter how hard you practice, <laughs> no matter how hard you train, you cannot simulate, you know, actually playing football. So um, I would think it was just being his best interest to play. I'm not going to count his money, his agent, and they know what's going on. I read somewhere where his agent said that it just is not enough long-term protection for his client. Um, NFL stands for not for long, and I just would be scared about injury. But you know, just with NFL, you know, NFL actually lists an injury report, which everyone looks at constantly. You know, that's because players get so in injured so often. So, I mean, my whole thing is how could you just skip out and just say, nah, I'm gonna roll the dice? You know, it's his life, not mine. But, um, me, I would have took that bread. It sounded like a good deal to me once again. Six years, 139 million, 95 million in the first five years of the contract. So the last year would be okay. Well, damn. The last year would be 42 million. Uh, okay, I can see it. So, so pretty much it's a five year, $95 million deal. So, one, the 139 number is bogus. So, that's less than 20 a season. So let's see, top, top tackle money, top NFL tackles salary. So Trent Williams, the first 99 in Madden history, by the way, shout out to my Madden, Madden players, makes 23 million. He's not on his level. He's not on David Bakhtiari's level. Uh, Tunsil makes 22. I don't think he's on Tunsil's level. And then you go to Stanley at 19. So he would be around the Ronnie Stanley, a little bit less than Tunsil. I still would have take, taken it. I still would have taken it. But so we see here, I, I still would have taken it. Uh, Ryan Ramshack. That's about his speed. I still, I would have taken, I would have taken the bread. But maybe they're looking at it as, you know, there's talks that the cap is just going to spike astronomically with Apple, with Amazon, whoever pays for the Sunday ticket. They're talking about tripling what DirecTV was paying. So the cap is just going to jump like something insane. So he's probably thinking, let's just get some short term bread right now. And then we jump back in when I'm, I'm doing five years at the average 
of guys now, maybe it doesn't make sense long term. So maybe that's what they're thinking. So, you know, good luck to him. Hopefully he stays healthy. Um, the thing says that a couple of other players did not come to an agreement. Jesse Bates. And Jesse Bates has said publicly, I'm not playing. I'm not showing up to camp. Um, I don't think he was a high draft pick, second round pick. So he hasn't made that much money in the NFL. So as a second rounder, I don't think you've even made a million in salary yet. So uh, a million a year in salary yet. So I would take the money <laughs> again. But, you know, other people, obviously, this is the world. People think differently. Dalton Schultz and Mike Gusecki. Um, I don't know if I would offer them those two type of players, huge extension. I think those are more like fillers until we find something better. Um, yeah, Jesse basically he has no attention to report to training cap or to play on the franchise tag. Now, everybody changes their mind once they start missing checks. Once you start missing meals, it's easy to say you're going to go on a hunger strike until that first hunger pain hits you. So that first bill hits you and you dipping out of savings to pay, you don't know. I mean, if it's me, I would play it. It generally doesn't end well for players who do these holdouts. Le'Veon Bell, let me see if there's a line with him. No, it's not here, but Le'Veon Bell says that he regrets the way that he handled the situation with the Steelers. If you remember, he set out the whole year, didn't sign a uh, his franchise tag. Next year, one with the Jets. Didn't really recoup the money that he lost, if, if, that he would have gained. Um, didn't change his market value for the Jets, so I mean, I think you should just play under it, but I see how unjust it is to even have a franchise tag to begin with. Bobby Wagner says, I didn't want to leave Seattle, but I'm at peace with the situation. Again, I don't understand what Seattle's doing because it's like they're at one foot in, one foot out. Like they're going to pay um, DK Metcalf, but they released Bobby Wagner. You know, it might be that they just are going to tank this season. They haven't said it publicly, but they're going to tank because look at their quarterback room with Drew Locke and, and, and Geno Smith. Like, they didn't even look into Baker Mayfield. They haven't looked to upgrade it at all. You could say, hey, give us Sam Darnold on the cheap. We'll take him. Or, hey, Cam Newton or Colin Kaepernick or someone, let's come in like these guys, we've these guys' highs have not been as high as Cam Newton's and Colin Kaepernick's, and, and it's been a long time, but still, I would see. Let's just bring them into camp. But now nah, we're rolling with these guys. So maybe they're tanking. And maybe paying DK Metcalf is like, listen, when we do get our quarterback, we want the room to be ready for him. We don't want to rebuild at this guy, at that guy. You have your, your standout in DK Metcalf. You have a good guy in Lockett. We've built out the offense around him. So we just need to drop our elite quarterback in there. That might be their thinking. But um, you would think that Pete Carroll, with his age, that he's trying to win now. And I'm unsure of this with the moves that they've made so far. Uh, Jason McCourty announces his retirement. You know, congratulations to him. You know, I just, I'm always amazed when I talk to uh, players that I know uh, that used to play football and talk about how their body is so beat up. Shout out to my man, Marty Marr. He told me the pain that he had when he played football. And, you know, he's talked to NFL players like Richard Marshall, who said, man, their body was just a mess when they were done. They just physically, they're shot. If you deal with all the injuries, the injuries that they don't even list on the injury report, it's just, it's crazy. So, um, you know, shout out to these guys, you know, guys are retiring younger uh, to take care of their body and, you know, it makes sense to do so. So let's go ahead and switch it to the NBA a little bit. So the news is it looks like the Knicks are in the catbird seat to get Donovan Mitchell. And it sounds like they're going to want six first-round picks. Uh, Zach Lowe, the Don, wrote an article today about teams undervaluing picks. I just think that this is what happens when you're insecure. 
And it's not a small market, big market team because you have two teams in opposite markets. You have the Knicks and maybe the biggest market NBA and Minnesota, one of the smaller markets in the NBA. And they're both moving out of insecurity. They haven't won anything. They haven't been to the playoffs. Um, Knicks got a taste the year before last. And then uh, Timberwolves did this current season. And they're just so eager and so anxious to do something they're willing to get taken advantage of. And it's just messed up the whole market because there's teams who are not in those positions who are saying, I'm not playing by this role. Just like I said, is this Christian Kirk or is this Deshaun Watson? And a lot of teams are saying, this is Chris Deshaun Watson. This is not Christian Kirk. We're not paying every receiver $20 million. We are not trading seven or eight first round picks. We're not doing that. We're not just handcuffing our whole franchise. Um, I think the Knicks are going to do it. They have to do it. They have to get a star in somewhat, somehow. If they can do this trade and say, maybe keep, I think they have seven picks altogether from other teams. If they can do this deal and maybe keep, you know, some of their own picks uh, and maybe one of those uh picks from the other team and keep RJ Barrett. So where I think they have seven pick first round picks from other teams, including their own picks in the Knicks. I think you can trade up to six years of picks, you know, those 13 picks that are available to trade. Um, if they can keep the number down to like say five and keep RJ Barrett, then I'm cool with that. If they can, if, if my math is right on the number of picks that they have coming up in the future, maybe you, uh, you know, just trade the seven as long as you can keep RJ Barrett because then RJ Barrett is a vehicle in which you can trade a Randall, attach them to in salary and maybe go out and try to get another player because I don't think you can keep that three together. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, Brunson, Randall, these are all undersized players. These are all players that need the ball in their hand. They don't really complement each other at all. So I think you would have to trade Randall. You know, it's funny. I just thought of this. You know, Donovan Mitchell, he uh, not Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brunson left Dallas because he wanted more shots and more control of the offense. You're not controlling the offense and getting more shots now that it, Mitchell is coming. You're not going to do that. It's going to be Mitchell's team. He's going to be the de facto point guard, and you're going to play off him much like you played off of Luca, maybe a little bit less because he's not as good as Luca, but pretty much you're going to do the same. And I know people are kind of down on Donovan Mitchell. I think he's a, a, a great player. I mean, he uh, had two really good playoff runs. This last one was kind of trash, but I think they kind of had worn out um, the, the welcome in Utah, just in the sense of that group of guys. And when it's stale like that, I think that affects you mentally and it affects your play on the court and uh they had they should have done the trade the year before at least that's what people were saying but you're not gonna get this pick call that you did so you know they struck at the uh, absolute right time so i gotta give danny ainge credit for that now the the thing that i think he's overlooking is that he has such a noxious reputation amongst other teams in the league with gms and with players so this trader Danny situation that all of them, they love to praise him for, it's nice to get all these picks, but if you're getting high flyers and superstars, are they going to want to stay there? Is any superstar going to say, you know what, Utah is the place I want to stay, especially when you have a Danny Ainge in the front office who's so curt and has this reputation that I'll trade anybody. So we'll see. Um, but uh yeah, the Pacers, you know, it seems like they lucked out on, on Aiden. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing because on one hand, I thought they were kind of tanking, which they don't really do, but I think they're going to kind of be forced to now. Uh, Miles Turner's name has been in trade rumors so long. You, I think you just have to trade him. Um, and then the news just broke that uh, I thought he signed his contract extension. I don't usually talk about GM's contract extensions, but – there was rumor that Sean Marks had signed a contract extension. Now they're saying he hasn't signed it. If I was him, I wouldn't sign it either. Uh, you know, this whole situation with the KD thing, they're underwhelmed by the offers. I just heard today that the Suns have never even offered Mikkel Bridges. It's been Cam Johnson picks, 
and that's in Aiden. They haven't even offered Mikael Bridges. So it just shows a lot of teams just they're not buying to what Danny Age is selling and we got to trade all this stuff. Why? And I agree with the Lakers now, you know, a little bit. I can understand Jeannie Buss's plight. Like, why are we trying to trade multiple first round picks for a player that nobody wants? Anyway, we're the only person bidding. Why are we bidding so much? To me, if I'm the Nets, man, I just accept. Uh, I look at everyone's best offers and I take their offer. You can't run it back, you know? And part of this is you just need to turn the page. Like, let's figure out what the best offer is and turn the page and like, oh, if I don't get what I want, I'm not trading you. You don't want these guys to come back. You can't change the rules of engagement once you started the war. And they started, the. they changed the rules of engagement. They, for better or worse, gave KD and Kyrie full reign of the team, knowing both of those guys are emotional guys. Both of those guys are, have not been the most consistent, uh, dependable. So you can't do the about face and say, hey, this is the way it's going to be, take it or leave it. They say they're going to leave it, and then you not let them leave it. Like, you know, you told them take it or leave it. They both ask for trades, and you're not, you're now you're saying you're not going to trade for them. There's no scenario in which this team wins a title next year. There's no scenario. I know a lot of people are comparing this to Kobe Bryant and the Lakers. That team wasn't fully formed. We know what this Nets team is going to be. It's going to be Kyrie, KD, Ben Simmons, probably two of the three most unreliable players in recent league history. So um, I just think you got to blow it up. Just see what the best offer is and move forward. You've done this before, right? It was less in your cupboard. You did this before, after the disastrous uh, Darren Williams, then KG and Paul Piss trade that gave all your picks to the Celtics. You were able to rebuild it before. You got to do it again. And now you're going to have more picks and you're going to have a building block in Ben Simmons if he ends up playing. So that's what I would do. Uh, I don't think the offers are going to get better with time. I think they're going to get worse. I was expecting the trade to happen. Um, because of summer league, but now everybody's leaving summer league and it's vacation season. A lot of NBA guys, they go dark. Now they go to Croatia, Mediterranean, Italy, they put their feet in the sand. So it's going to be harder, not easier. I, I just don't see what the event that's going to happen. That's going to automatically open up a team in which KD would be interested in going. Like, I just don't see that. Like, a uh, superstar asking for a trade. If a superstar asks for a trade, you know, KD's not going to want to go to the place that the superstar is actually get traded from. So, you know, that's just my idea on it. So thank you guys again. I appreciate the support. I appreciate the love. I appreciate my, my guys from college, Art, Mike, uh, MYK. Tone and Marty, I appreciate y'all pushing me to keep going on this. I dropped off for a second. I appreciate you, CT, for looking out for me with your subscribers. Um, dropping some new Game of Thrones content this weekend for all my Thrones fans. Um, dropping some college football content here pretty soon. Uh, the 21st, I believe, we're 40 days away, close to you know, football. It's almost almost touchable. You know, uh, football is coming up around the corner. Uh, they stopped with NBA Today, today, ESPN, no more NBA Today going forward. You know, it's just going to be on a as-needed basis. And now it's back to NFL Live. NFL Live still has the C team. They got team people up here that I've never seen before. Actually, they got Adam Schefter. And, uh, yeah, they got Adam Schefter up here. So, so, you know, we'll see what ends up happening. All right, the game is the game. All right, thank you for watching this clip. Do me a favor, push the button, hit subscribe. Come on, man, push it. Come on, everybody up. Push the goddamn button. Push the goddamn button. You heard what she said. And do what's right. You heard her. Push the button. The game is a game. So what's up, man? What's up with you otherwise, you know? Uh, the game is a game. Always. <laughs>